Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Right on this bike I've already had uh, the exhaust upgraded with the arrow exhaust. I've had the ECU remapped for more power and to accommodate the exhaust with no cat. And the last stage of my tune is going to be to replace the air filter, which is underneath here, with a higher flow one performance air filter. Welcome back all and welcome to another video. Um, before I start I'd like to recommend this uh, Haynes manual for the Yamaha MT-07 XSR 700. Uh, it's very useful and it goes into a lot of detail. It's got black and white photos. I didn't actually realise they were still making these for modern machines. Um, it's a pretty useful um, and I'm going to be using it to guide me through this air filter replacement which isn't as straightforward as I would like it to be because the first step is to remove the fuel tank. So that's what I'm going to do now. Right, the first step is to remove all the little Allen screws. There's a load of small ones along each side of the centre section. And then there's six big ones. One, two, three, four, five, six at the front. And once you've done that, you can lift this centre trim panel out. That then exposes the centre section. And then you just have a couple more Allen keys and a few clips to kind of wiggle loose. And you should be able to get the side sections out of the way. And when you've done that, the side cover comes off pretty easily. One thing to note at the front of each side panel, there is a small plastic clip. You've released these by getting something small, like a small Allen key, poking it in the middle till it pops, and then it should lift away. Something interesting I've noticed um, is that the bike looks great on the outside, nice and green painted. Um, they've not really bothered with it on the inside. <laughs> It's just a bit of undercoat and a very faint bit of spray with bits missing. Obviously a cost cutting there. Now the instruction book says that it may be possible to change the air filter without fully removing the tank and just hopefully just lifting it up if you have small enough screwdrivers. So I'm hoping that just by taking these two hex keys out, the hex screws out and the two on the other side, I can lift it up enough to remove the air filter without taking the whole tank off. I've now removed those four bolts and the tank's popped up a bit and as you can see it does lift up so I'm going to hopefully get a small screwdriver into the four screws on top of this air filter housing and see if I can replace the air filter without taking the whole tank off. And I managed to get those four screws out. You need a little stubby screwdriver for the back too if you're going to do it without lift taking the tank off. You also want to make sure you haven't got too much fuel in your tank or it'll be too heavy to do this with. Um, it doesn't have to be completely empty but uh, well under half full I'd suggest. So now those four, sc four screws are out. Um, I can lift the tank and pull this cover off. And having done that here's the cover. And looking down the hole, there is the old filter. Let's just focus this. As you can see, it's quite dirty already. I've only done about 9,000 miles. So all I have to do is pop that one out and put the new K&N air filter in. Now, I have seen, actually, that a lot of people leave it like this and leave this off, I guess, to give more airflow into this hole. Um, my concern with that would be, though, that a lot more dust and grime would probably collect inside it. So I think I am going to put this one back. And the final step is there is one more screw inside the air filter itself. It's a Phillips um, crosshead screwdriver, screw, sorry, which you need a long screwdriver to remove. And just before I go, actually, I've got the new K and air filter in place now. And I've noticed something with the original housing. The housing, originally, it plugs into the old air filter like this, and you have this tube going down into the centre of the filter. It actually goes the other way like that. Um, so the top top surface seals against the air filter to stop dust and dirt getting in and the tube funnels air into the filter. Something I've been thinking is this tube actually goes quite deep into the old air filter leaving a fairly small gap between the bottom of the tube and the bottom of the filter leaving therefore a fairly small gap for air to get sucked through the filter restricting airflow. And in fact now I've got the original air filter out in the sun you can kind of see where it's hardly been using any of the space available to it. Only the bottom, kind of three quarters of an inch, 
is actually dirty, which kind of suggests the rest of it isn't getting any airflow at all. So what I'm going to do, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, it's not based on any science <laughs> apart from some fairly basic tuning stuff I know, is to cut a section off this tube to give a much bigger space for the air to flow through the filter, but still sealing, still using this top plate to seal against the old housing. In, in theory, to my thinking anyway, more airflow is always better, so it should give more power and performance. So I'm going to cut this tube off about a centimetre from the top um, before I reinstall it. I'm not suggesting you do it, but to my mind, uh, it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.